Meet Swift's latest RGBW panel innovations, the Van Gogh 70 and Van Gogh 100 LED panels. The Van Gogh series uses exclusive edge-mounted RGBW SMD LEDs, which results in an extremely thin 21 millimeter LED panel that is fanless, making zero noise on set. Thinner, lighter, brighter, and quieter. These are the Van Gogh Ultra Slim RGBW panels by Swit. There's an old saying, many hands make light work. This couldn't be more true than with the latest addition to our range of support accessories, the iFootage Spider Crabs. An ingeniously designed set of support arms which go where you go, consistently and safely supporting your valuable equipment, providing you with the time, space, and freedom to create. Spider Crabs provide a reliable, modular system designed to support you, no matter where you find yourself working. This versatile system cleverly combines a variety of practical support options, providing you with even more creative choices and possibilities. Action! Good. I need more passion. Camera up. Turn up the heat and make those embers glow. Beautiful. I feel good. I feel good right now. I'm on fire, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. It's time to change the way we think about lighting. Introducing the new Anglerfish series from iFootage. Boasting cutting edge color reproduction without sacrificing portability, the Anglerfish series makes cinematic lighting more accessible than ever. The Anglerfish series utilizes a bespoke construction and a new one of a kind LED element to recreate the full spectrum of the sun with unbeaten accuracy. This unique LED element recreates the full daylight spectrum, but without the blue peak that's typically found in even the top studio lighting products.
For years, Aperture has created some of the best lighting for studios and feature films. But we also know that not everyone needs a studio to create a film. Introducing Amaran. Meet the Amaran 100D, 100X, 200D, and 200X. Four brand new lights that bring power, flexibility, and ease of use to the fast-paced world of content creation. Hello everyone, welcome to Pro TV. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're gonna be talking about Atomos today and I'm joined by Chris from Holden. How are you, Chris? I'm very well and before we kick this off, I just wanna say I love this setup that you've got going Good. on here. It's a really Good. lovely, uh, lovely setup. Very much. It's so much nicer talking to people in person than over a Skype call because we, we, we actually did a few like this during lockdown, didn't we? We did. It is so much better than a Zoom call. I mean, um, the downside is that I did have to get changed. So you had to get changed. You had yeah. to drive two and a half hours, yeah. and you have to actually look at me, especially yeah. when I've got a cold. As well, <laughs> you can actually see me in my snotty nose. Yeah, that bit's not so good for me, but yeah, <laughs> it's nice to see you face to face. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the trip down for us. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Atomos mm -hmm. because Atomos, we all know. Atomos is such a staple in the industry mm. now. We know them so well for adding extra functionality to our cameras. Maybe that's ProRes recording. Maybe it's now RAW recording. They've ventured very recently mm. into a whole new chapter, if you like, for Atomos, which I guess is the Atomos struggle, isn't it? If we talk about it big picture for a second, being an external recorder company, they've sort of got to keep pushing the envelope forwards, haven't they? To, to keep adding functionality that we don't necessarily get through our cameras. And I guess this is just the latest generation of that, right? No, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you've hit the nail on the head there, really. You know, camera internal codecs available are getting better and better. So obviously you've got to, you've got to make more reason to want to use an external monitor recorder. And of course, the whole connected range is, is very much uh, the big focus for Atomos going forward. Um, and that connected range, there's three new pieces of hardware that are available. You've got Atomos Connect, Shogun Connect, and the Zato Connect, and mm. that's what we'll cover in this session today. And obviously, I'll run you through what you can actually do with these new products. Absolutely. So I've just put a quick little poll down in the um, YouTube chat as to who already uses Atomos here. And so far, it's been 100% yes. Excellent. Job um, done. <laughs> you know, Atomos is just so prov like um, well-known throughout the industry because I mean they've been making external recorders now for a long time mm, yeah they have long time um, so this lineup will probably look familiar to most people but yes. they are different so let, let's go through a little bit as to um, what's similar and what's different with these models than the current ones, if you like. Well, not current ones, these are the current yeah, yeah. ones. Okay, so the, the Atomos Connect, which is, is a new module for the Ninja 5 or the 5 Plus, which is what I've got here. 
And it's an expansion module. It clips on yeah. the back, and it gives you all of these connected features. What are those connected features? I'll, I'll talk about that as we go further yeah, on in the yeah, session. Sure, sure. Um, but you do also get um, improved I.O. connectivity. Uh, and again, I'll talk more about that. But essentially, you know, this does just attach onto your Ninja 5, your 5 Plus, all the same features that you have available on the 5 and 5 sure. Plus, professional monitoring tools, recording formats are all still there, of course, it's still still a Ninja at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, but this just adds all of the connected capabilities to it. And I'm just looking up the, the price on this, but this is what I love about the Ninja 5. Yeah. Because how many years ago did the Ninja 5 it's about actually come just out over, uh, Just over, well, it's four and a half years ago now. That's an incredible lifespan, really, for a product in this industry. Because sure. things go, at, this industry moves fast. It yeah. really does. Especially something which is designed to add extra functionality to your camera that your cameras aren't already doing. Yeah. Um, it really breathes a lot of life into older cameras. And so to be able to breathe life into your device that is already four years old, which already breathes life into older cameras, is pretty remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think when the Ninja 5 first came out, we probably weren't really talking about remote collaboration workflows, etc. You know, uh, camera to cloud. It was really just about recording in a, a better, better codec or ProRes absolutely. RAW, for example. Um, so, uh, you know, yeah, it's great to see that obviously Atomos is still investing heavily into the Ninja 5. And if you own a Ninja 5, like many people do, yep. you know, there's still lots of life left in that unit. Absolutely. I mean, I mean the Shogun Connect is a, it's a brand new a brand new monitor slash recorder, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is what you can see in the middle of the table here. Yep. And it is Atomos's most uh, powerful Shogun to date. It doesn't replace the other Shogun. They're, mm -hmm. they're running in tandem because there are you know, features that you get with this that you don't get with the other and vice versa. Uh, but it's just another flavor, another option out there. And then the Zato or Zato, I'll leave it to your audience as to how they want to pronounce it, um, is really, the best way to think about this one is more like a Shinobi, uh, with uh, live streaming capabilities, and it does have some basic recording capabilities on board yep. as well. And yeah, yeah that's a very interesting, but we'll chat definitely more in depth on that one because it's it sits sort of in the middle of so many different product categories. Yes, that one for sure. Um, but let's start, shall we, by going over why you actually want and to connect any of your Atomos products to the internet anyway. Yeah, why, why should people care about yeah. it? Yeah, why, why do people <laughs> care? Um, yeah, no, uh, before we get to that, we, we can look at the, the, the stages of Atomos's main focus over the years. Uh, and basically that kind of outlines how we've got to where we are today. So if you look at initially, the original Ninjas, uh, you know, it was really about helping people transition from tape to tapeless mm. and also circumnavigating the internal codex on the camera so that they could record in that BBC broadcast quality 10-bit 422. You know, that was, mm -hmm. that's what everyone wanted, you know, whether you're on your, your AX3s, your AX1s, etc. Um, using a Ninja got around that. And it wasn't so much around, um, you know, the, the professional monitoring tools or the, the screen itself. Of course, they were a bonus. But it was about going tape to tapeless and yep. better codex. Well, on the old ones, the screen wasn't that good as a monitor. No, really. no, no. And they even made those ones like the Star that didn't even have a monitor. On That's them. right. Yeah, the Ninja Star in 2014. Yeah, yeah just had a couple of physical buttons, yeah. and you just select which flavor of ProRes you want to record in. So yeah, that just goes to show how 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 much of a focus it was. You know, it wasn't all about the the monitoring. Yeah. And then obviously, uh, a few years later, for down the line, uh, the shift was. Uh, bringing non-proprietary RAW to the masses. We're specifically talking about ProRes RAW here Yes. Uh, with, with the Ninja 5, because historically, if you wanted to record in a, let's say, compressed RAW format, you're probably shooting with quite a high-end cine camera, yep. which isn't quite accessible for everyone. Uh, or you're recording in full-blown RAW, which, you know, it's, it's great to have all that data, but at the same time, it's bad because you have all that data and it's, it's costly in storage and it's costly in processing power. So obviously ProRes RAW, over 30 cameras support that now uh, with the likes yeah. of a Ninja uh, 5 or the 5 Plus or, or the Shogun. So yeah, that, w that was the second big milestone, big focus for the company. And that brings us now to the third, uh, which is of course the connected realm. It's really, about, it's really about collaboration, remote collaboration, which was kind of perpetuated by the pandemic, uh, but also more of a shift towards trying to reduce travel costs trying to reduce the carbon footprint of a production. How can we bring less people along, but still mm. collaborate in, you know, as close as we can do uh, in the same sense as what we, we used to do. So that's the journey. And of course the connected um, offering now from, from Atomos is really gonna be their 
their sort of their, their, their flagship message going forward. Um, so what is that exactly? And going back to your question, why should you care about it? What what what, what does these what what is the connected offering? What does it mean? Um, well, really, it's a two pronged attack here from from Atomos. You've got the hardware, which is what you see on the table here, and then you've got this new Atomos Cloud Studio, which is their cloud based platform, uh, which really acts as a gateway. Uh, so that these units can talk to Atmos Cloud Studio and Atmos Cloud Studio can then handle sharing that content wherever you want it to go in the world, whether it's doing camera to cloud or it's doing live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, etc. Uh, this acts as a central portal. So it's very much there's two elements to, to this connected offering. There's the platform or the, the cloud studio mm -hmm. and then there's the hardware. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're going to be talking about, you know, these products, it's always going to be a, a dual pronged approach. So all of these units, whether it's the Shogun Connect, the Connect module, the Zato, they feed into this Atomos Cloud um, Studio, this this portal, which is it's free. It's free uh, to, to register and, and assign a product to it, your account. And if you were to do that, this is this is how it looks on the screen here. Each of these products can connect to the internet, either via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Uh, and once you connect to the internet you are presented with three unique words. Each of these devices has three unique words, not models, every individual device. And then when mm -hmm. you come into Atomos Cloud Studio, you simply type those three words and then, hey presto, it's linked to your account. And this is what it looks like when, when, you've, got your, when you've got your units linked into your account. So I've got uh, my Zato there, I've got my Holden Shogun Connect, and you can see there's a little green dot for the Shogun Connect, which means it was online. Obviously this is a screenshot, it's not live right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and from here, this is where you can really manage your, you know, the different models that you've got. Eventually, you'll be able to do firmware updates over the cloud. Not right now. That will come. Obviously, if you look in the top corner of the screen, that does say beta or beta. Mm -hmm. So not all the features are there. It's still very much growing. But this is where you can essentially point these products to, to shove content wherever it is that you want. And Atomos Cloud Studio works really nicely on a mobile phone browser. So you mm -hmm. can do this out in the field. You don't have to be you know, tied to a desktop or, mm -hmm. or a laptop. You can do this wherever. So what, what can you actually do with Atomos Cloud Studio and these products? And it really boils down to these, these five, uh, five segments. We've got live streaming, camera to cloud, remote monitoring, file sharing, and live production. And uh, I, I've already mentioned it's in beta at the moment. So the two in green are the ones that you can do today. Mm -hmm. The ones in yellow or orange um, are the ones that are coming in the near future. And um, just to sort of be clear, Atomos Cloud Studio is currently free. Going forward post October, it will be a sort of a subscription base because at the end of the day, Atomos are moving data and moving data it, you know, isn't free ultimately. Yeah. So we'll go through each segment, see how they work and what you can do with it, and then we'll talk more about the differences between these models. Sure. Um, so live streaming, I mean, live streaming is you know, obviously nothing new in the, in, in the world. We've, we've, we're doing it right now, and people have been doing it for quite some time. Um, but obviously live streaming, uh, completely relying on a standalone unit and not a laptop or you know, desktop is a little bit more, uh, let's say, new. Um, so with all of these units, they'll all be able to live stream. Live stream to the likes of um, YouTube Live and Twitch using RTMP, so H2, H.264. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, you can only live stream to those two platforms. Facebook Live will be coming along with custom RTMP destinations. So ultimately any, anywhere, which is yeah, it's the big one, ultimately anywhere. So it's, at the moment, it's just YouTube and Twitch. And they're integrated, so you don't need to copy the stream URL. It's just copying the stream key. Okay. So you go into your, you know, your live platform, YouTube, copy the stream key, and again, you can do all this on your mobile phone, which is quite nice. Uh, and then away you go. You know, you don't have to. If anyone's used a camera with an, um, a live streaming encoder built oh, into that it, is, yeah. Typing in the, the the stream URL and the stream key on a little touch screen on a camera can be quite tedious, yes. to say the least. Yes. So this, this gets around that, you know, it's a copy and paste job all from your, from your mobile phone. What is coming soon uh, on the cloud platform is the ability of simultaneously live streaming to multiple destinations, mm -hmm. much like mm -hmm. what you can do on Restream or Teradex Core Cloud. At the moment, it's just single destination. Sure. So that's live streaming. Um, the, big, the big one, 
just before we move on to, yeah, yeah, to thing on live stream, we've had a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. So Stop the FOMO has asked, can the bitrate and infrastructure support 4K 30p streaming in the future or alternatively 1080p 60 for live streaming action and sports? Uh, it will depend on the model. Um, uh-huh. Zato, I very much doubt we'll, we'll ever get to 4K with it. It's, it's going to be yep. limited to, to HD. Uh, potentially in the future with the likes of the Shogun and the Ninja. I can't say for sure, but it, yep. it's definitely more than capable. The processing power is there. It's not something that we've committed to, you know? It's one of these things with anything to do with the Atomos Cloud Studio is Mm. that there is a lot of question marks right now, isn't there? Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. And, yeah, can it be added in the future? Yeah, I'm sure it can. Yeah, like I say, it's very much beta. You know, the the, the end goal is to have this centralized platform where you can control everything to do with these units down Mm -hmm. to bit rates, you know, uh, resolution for streaming out. Mm -hmm. This is really just the first foray into this realm. But right now... Do we know if it is just limited to 1080-30? For streaming, yes. Yeah. Cool. That's right, yeah. Cool. Uh, camera to cloud, which is obviously sort of the biggest noise is coming around this camera to cloud. Mm. And what is it if you've never used it, etc.? Uh, and if you haven't done a camera to cloud workflow before, uh, it's essentially if you're out in the field uh, recording, obviously using one of these connected devices, you record your hero file on board, which will be your ProRes file, and you'll automatically encode a proxy file. In this case, it'll be H.265. And they share the same naming convention, the same time code, and that H.265 file gets shot up to Atomos Cloud Studio using Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and then gets sent to Frame.io. Mm-hmm. And then when it lands in Frame.io, you can then share that with anyone in the world. They don't have to have a Frame.io paid for account to, to review content. Mm-hmm. Um, but you might have an editor sat somewhere in the world who can automatically then just start pulling down that content and start editing it. Um, Adobe own Frame.io, bought them not too long ago. So if you're a Adobe Premiere user, you even have Frame.io built directly into Premiere now. So you don't actually have to leave Premiere mm. to, to do this workflow, which is pretty crazy considering, you know, we could have a filmmaker on the other side of the world shooting right now and we can start picking it up. Um, and am I right in thinking that you get access to all of that through your Adobe subscription as well? You're already paying Adobe monthly, and it's included in that. There's no extra cost. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. So, yeah, that's one of the benefits of it being bought by Adobe. Yeah. Adobe have, uh, what, over 25 million subscribers. If yep. you subscribe to Creative Cloud, as in the full suite, it's yep. free. It's also free if you subscribe to Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects. Cool. So you have this capability. You just need, obviously, the hardware and yeah. then the, the Atomos Cloud Studio side as well. Um, so at the moment, uh, if you want to do camera to cloud, it's limited to 4K, uh, DCI 4K at 30 frames a second in terms of your master files. So gotcha. that can be ProRes HQ, ProRes you know, 42, whatever. Um, and then your H.265 proxy file will be limited to, to 1080p 30. Uh, further down the line, Obviously, it'd be good to get to 60. Can't say when that will be. But mm-hmm. also, more impeding will be the ability of opening that up so that your hero files can be ProRes raw. Mm-hmm. At the moment, it's, there's no ProRes raw support. It's coming. It's just ProRes. Yep. So, yeah, that, that's a, a key thing to outline because I don't want anyone, obviously, yeah, <laughs> wanting to do a 4K record. 60 production, camera to cloud. Exactly. Uh, yeah. and, if, and if you do feed in a 4K 60 signal into these units, uh, they will switch out of the camera to cloud um, mode and they'll just go into standard recording mode gotcha gotcha so, so yeah who, who are we seeing use camera to cloud nowadays what sort of use case would you yeah. find that this would be most commonly used for well, well this this sort of workflow used to be quite inaccessible really um well, i mean it's something that like journalists for example have been doing for a long time yeah. through you know rtmp uploads and all that kind of stuff but it's always been really clunky and yes. really quite unuser intuitive. Yeah. Um, and so th- th- I think that's the big strength of this is it just, again, with Atomos, they keep doing it, just democratizing <laughs> this is quite high end, um, you know, features and parts of our industry mm. down to a level where pretty much everyone could do it if yes. they needed to. Yeah. Which is crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, if you think if you already own a Ninja, you mm. buy this module, mm. and if you've already got an Adobe account mm. uh, that you're paying for, obviously, subscription-based, and you've got Frame.io, you can do this just with the purchase of the module. Absolutely, and if you and if you don't, the Zato recorder is 
325 x fat. You know, you, you, that's not a big ceiling of entry, no, 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 <laughs> really, no, no, is it, in terms all. of price point? Not at all. But yeah, in terms of applications, uh, I think really there's, there's sort of two clear routes here. One, mm -hmm. uh, people who want to have a proxy file generated straight away. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't have to do the camera to cloud element. You can yeah. just use it for creating uh, H.265 okay. proxies straight away. So you, you could just use it as a local if recording you want proxy to do that, engine. Yeah, if you want to do that. Cool. Uh, if you obviously you want to do the camera to cloud, it's more about really quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're doing an event, a corporate event, maybe you're doing a wedding. You can have someone who's actually starting to edit whilst that wedding or event is still yep. taking place. It's not just for, you know, cine applications and, you know, traditional film production. Sure. Very much, I think, um, you know, your one-man band self-shooter yep. who's got an editor who maybe is a freelancer and a part-timer or whatever. Yeah, um, say you're filming a wedding, for example. Yeah. It's quite common to work with a separate editor because yeah, editing yeah. wedding video takes a long time. And so yeah. they could literally have those proxy files, which are probably good enough for like a same-day edit kind of situation. Absolutely. Because, you know, there'll be small bitrate 1080p H.265, but... Yep. H.265 is so good now, even the small data rate H.265 does look pretty good. It looks brilliant. It looks um, brilliant. You could edit that and deliver it to, on a same-day edit for a, a highlight reel for a wedding, for example. No problem, I reckon. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And obviously, um, once, you've, once you've done your shoot and you are back at base and you've logged your footage, because your hero files and your proxy files share the same naming convention, mm -hmm. they share the same time code, it's literally just the case of unlinking the proxies yep. in your edit and swapping them out, and hey presto, then you've got your 4K. No. So to use that wedding example, just as a, as a, as a use case, um, you could have a same day edit go out on a trailer by somebody sitting anywhere in the world, yep. pings, here's your social media edit. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And then, boom, you get the rushes actually back, relink and all the rest of it, and then that full res file of it is delivered to them at the end along with any other edits you might be doing for them yeah. but they get a, a, a social media quality version instantly and a, um, a fuller res version when the actual editing is done absolutely yeah. yeah even like even grassroots sport for example sport absolutely. You know, and obviously you could have more than one camera operator on the field or whatever yeah. the event is doing this coverage yeah and yeah your editor anywhere else in the world just picking it up Absolutely. and you know it doesn't have to just be one editor it could be anyone that you need to collaborate with yeah you know it could be the you know, the customer could be your director whatever they you know it decentralizes the production and that that's bringing it into an editor if you take the editor out of it and you just think like this is high um used on higher end features all the time for just shot reviewing yeah um people quite often get dailies mm -hmm. and that is they're not doing anything with those dailies they're just looking through them to yeah. check check whatever aspect they're responsible for yeah they're just checking it um and you can now do a full-on dailies workflow which actually in feature films is quite an expensive process yeah, it is. Really, it really great is. Really great is. dailies um just through this yeah and i think um you know that's one of the the nice benefits of frame io obviously we're talking about camera to cloud and what it allows you to do but frame io as a as a platform itself mm. you know it's a fully fledged platform this started off as a review platform not yeah. for camera to cloud so you know if you're wanting to uh start tagging uh, shots daily is going through it annotating you know you can really collaborate quite easily with an, any number of people really and you know they have a really nice smartphone app as well so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. something that you could even pick up whilst you're out in the field still mm -hmm. you know so yeah, lo lots of possibilities with, with Frame.io. Definitely, definitely. So that's Camera to Cloud. So live streaming, Camera to Cloud, that's what's here right now. Yeah. Obviously, there's, there's still some work to be done with the live streaming element in terms of custom More RTMP and, and Facebook, et cetera, and uh, multiple streams. But what else is coming is uh, file sharing. Uh, file sharing, it's the same principle of Camera to Cloud, mm -hmm. i.e. You're, you know, you're sending your proxy file somewhere, but this is if you don't want to use the likes of Frame.io. If you want to drop it into Dropbox, Google mm -hmm. Drive, mm -hmm. you'll have the ability of doing this. Uh, we don't have all the details of how this will be done, mm -hmm. but this is a feature that Atomos have committed to. Mm -hmm. uh, and same goes for remote monitoring. Um, obviously, now that these devices are connected and we're sending video from this device up to the cloud, you know, we want to actually be able to send that back to one of these devices to decode so we can actually do some can do some onset monitoring or you mm -hmm. know remote monitoring. Um, the key there is really about latency, especially if you're on set. Um, so Atomos again, they've committed to to, to making this uh, a feature that's going to come hopefully not too far in the in the future. Um, but yeah, onset monitoring, remote monitoring, 
ultra low latency will be coming with these devices too. And I think this is a really big area, which I think is an area that almost didn't exist before COVID. Mm. And I think is here to stay, you know, when the pandemic happened, everyone all of a sudden had to work remotely. And you, you saw a lot of directors trying to direct remotely and clients that couldn't join a shoot, but mm. still a shoot needed to happen, started reviewing it remotely. And it was all using big Teradex stuff and that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it works, but the, the setups got expensive very quickly. Mm. And th- there's now that the pandemic is hopefully done with, um, there is still a huge potential for that. You know, say if you're working with a worldwide brand, they might have several key stakeholders throughout the world that want that if they could be there, would be on set with yeah. you, that they've been sitting there in front of the client TV or whatever to check on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. But they can't be there, or they couldn't be there because of their schedule or they just don't want to pay for a flight. You know, how easy would it be to chuck one of those in the post? <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, the CEO of the company you're working with or whatever can be on shoot or the, probably more realistically one of the marketing people but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be on set with you effectively you know texting you while you're there yeah and obviously I don't like that coffee table can we change for another yeah that exactly. kind of thing yeah and, and you know all for the the cost of a you know if you're looking at the module yep. what 390 pounds including yeah. VAT that gets you that functionality but yeah and also the fact that you can obviously calibrate all of these monitors Yep. before they get sent out. Yes, the same experience the for the camera thing. op as it is for whoever's remote monitoring. I mean, I wonder if they're going to let you um, connect this through a web browser or if this is going to be device-to-device remote monitoring. Initially, what what Atomos have presented is device-to-device. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that can be device-to-device in terms of Atomos-to-Atomos or Atomos to, like, Apple TV. Ah, uh-huh. cool. So okay. that's coming as well. So, so that's even easier. They might already have an Apple TV yeah. you know, you, or an iPad, for example. Most, lots of people would just have one of those anyway. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so yeah, that's, that's it's, it's very much a key focus going forward as mm. well. This is, this is going to be a big one. Um, obviously, this is, this is about remote monitoring uh, over the public internet. This side of the year, we should be able to do remote monitoring locally. And I'll, I'll talk about how that's done because that's using slightly different technology but before we get onto that one other thing that i want to talk about or just mention at least is is remote live production yeah uh, at neb um when when these were sort of announced uh, they had a technology preview uh, with uh, a company called mavis and they do a cloud-based production switcher that runs on an ipad pro app uh, it's an ipad pro app essentially but it's running in the cloud mm. uh, and essentially you have your camera ops in the field this will communicate straight into their cloud-based switcher you could then have a director or a client anywhere else in the world seeing the multi-view or the program out mm-hmm. uh, commentate to spread out so again decentralizing the whole production um, and it's something that atomos are working closely with mavis i don't know when that will actually come into fruition in terms of being a product or a solution that someone can actually buy mm-hmm. but it's definitely in a, it's definitely in the making Cool. So that's what you can do with them. I think we'll just talk about the differences between between Absolutely. these devices because they are significantly different. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there are, there's really two categories going on here. You've got the fully fledged monitor slash external recorders that are connected capable, Shogun and uh, the Connect module. And then you have an external monitor uh, with some recording capability um, that is all about live streaming, which is which is the Zato. So let's start with the the Connect first, which is obviously the module. Uh, so on on the back of the unit, you have a, a one gig uh, Ethernet connection, so you can just hardwire in. You've also got Wi-Fi six, so you've got two methods there of connecting to a to a local network. Um, of course, you could use a personal hotspot on your mobile, which is realistically what most people are going to be doing if they're out in the field. Yep. Um, the antenna on the back is actually for Atomos's Air Glue Wireless Sync technology. Mm-hmm. So anyone who's familiar with uh, the Atomex Sync module, this has that built straight into it. Right. So this little one is for time code. Yes. Basically, wireless time code. So if you're not syncing things together, you're just connecting one. You don't have to have that. That connection. Yeah, you can take you take that off. There's a little rubber cover that comes with it. Yep. Um, so yeah, if you, if you don't need that, same goes for the for the Wi-Fi antennas. If you're if you're doing you're it, just doing it over fixed Ethernet, Ethernet then you, you don't, don't need to have them rigged. It still still works. Um, so yeah, with the sync module, you know that's quite important as well because you know you can do up to 200 meters uh, of wireless sync using mm-hmm. uh, using RF. There's also Bluetooth built into that, so you can sync up to six devices over Bluetooth if you wanted to. 
Or, because there's Bluetooth, you can control the Aninja via the app, which is also quite a nice added feature. And again, you know, that's kind of taking all the qualities of the sync module and building it into this. You've got your 12G SDI in. Mm -hmm. um, this, the, the, does that let you do the RAW? Or it will let you do the RAW, do yes. It will. Let, obviously, it's dependent on which uh, Ninja model you're pairing it with as to what you sure. can do. But yes, you can But do it's nice because it means that you don't have to, if you say you want this cloud stuff, you don't have to sacrifice the other modules that you might have been adding to this, you still get the SDI input for your raw recording, even on the situations where you're not using any of the cloud, you still get your wireless time code on the situations. Yeah. You know, this one module can replace those other two ones that you may already have or have been looking at buying. Yeah, I think that was an important decision from Atomos because this module, it has a lot going on and it's kind of ended the chain in terms of exactly. you can't put any more modules on exactly. this one. So they needed to factor in all the things that people actually liked using. It would have been very frustrating <laughs> if you had to choose, <laughs> yeah. oh, do I want this or this? Yeah. So yeah, you've got your 12G SDI in. You don't have an output if you're used to the, uh, yeah. the SDI module, literally just due to, to space on board. Um, and yeah, you can do up to 4K 120 with that SDI, or you can do uh, 6K 30 in RAW. Um, so yeah, it's nice to have straight on board there. Great. Uh, now I mentioned before about uh, the possibility of doing um, local remote monitoring mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. this side of the year, and that's because all of these units will have NDI HX3 available. Uh, initially, it will be encode that comes first. So mm -hmm. obviously we stick this on a network, and then obviously if you're used to NDI, you know, it's discoverable video over IP technology. So yep. any computer device that has NDI codecs installed, you can see it. So you can instantly pull this feed onto your laptop, your smartphone or whatever, bring it into vMix if you Absolutely. wanted to. Or this a will be such, I mean, obviously if you use a TriCaster or anything like that, it's an incredibly useful production tool. But, and you can replicate that more on a budget by using things like OBS and vMix. Yeah. But if you, just aren't interested in any of that mm -hmm. just as a simple client monitoring tool yeah like there's a little bit of latency so it's not quite as good as running a cable but you can set up your apple tv onto a tv or you can just have a laptop there exactly looking at your footage i mean who who doesn't have uh, you know access to a to a laptop nowadays in exactly. on a set or in a corporate yep. environment yep. even a smartphone push comes to shove yep. yeah get it on the network there you go you can see yep. your video feed and if you're using your laptop, then you can even record it there. So, you know, your client can record it, take it away and review it, you know. Um, so, yeah, that will be coming. Encode will come first, uh, hopefully in September. I know that we're a day off from September, I think. <laughs> so at some point in the next month, that will come along. And then Decode will come along too. So that's when it gets really interesting in terms of doing your local um, local monitoring because you could have, you know, your main Shogun or your main Ninja, uh, ACAM, encoding NDI, and then you know you've got your your director, your client viewing um, viewing the NDI decode on any other of these monitors, and that could even be a you know the likes of a Zato. And if the screen's too small, obviously you could plug this into the likes of a, a Sumo 19 SE or a Neon, etc. So really exciting stuff there with, with NDI, and that's obviously quite a, a new big thing for for Atomos. So I'll go into the the Shogun Connect. Obviously, the Shogun Connect is. You know, at first glance, it's a seven inch monitor recorder yep. as opposed to the five inches. It's a 2000 nit screen on the front there, uh, 2200 peak brightness. But this is this is Atomos's most powerful Shogun to date. So that's a really interesting. So if we take out the connected aspect of it, you know, you unscrew all the antennas. Mm -hmm. What is this like as a normal Shogun recorder? Well, as a, noble, a normal Shogun recorder, uh, if you want to do ProRes RAW, you can go up to 8K30. So it's very much taking sort of pedigree of the, the Ninja 5 Plus, mm. all the extra processing power, and housing it in a Shogun so you get that bigger, brighter screen and improved I.O. in the back. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's the natural progression from the technology that went into the Ninja 5 Plus. So even if you're not interested in any of the cloud stuff, it's still an upgrade of your current Shogun. It, it, yes, mostly. It depends on what you want from your Shogun. Now, this isn't going to mm. replace the current Shogun. Yeah, they're going to run. In, they're going to run in tandem. The bit where I think there's some confusion, isn't there? Yeah. So, in, and what are the differences? Well, the differences are on the, on the other Shogun, you have uh, four SDI inputs, and you can do live switching. Right. And you yes. can record your your ISO feeds and your program. This doesn't have that functionality. You can't do live switching with it. Uh, you do also get um, you know a, a BNC for for your timecoder Genlock. This doesn't have that because this has the wireless built into it. Gotcha. If you don't need those features, 
um, then obviously this one has a lot of other added features that you may obviously find interesting or may want. Sure. Um, so let's just jump into it. On the back, again, we've got a fixed Ethernet connection mm -hmm. just there. Uh, you've got Wi-Fi 6 again with the two antennas on the top. Now these antennas, they're removable, which we've already uh, <laughs> discussed, but they also have these little clips on the top. So mm. if you've got multiple cameras out in the field, you can obviously change the color of these. It's a little touch, but I think it goes a long, long I way. It's really <laughs> nice. I mean, you, you can see it there. You've got green and yellow. I've got just the normal black tips yeah. on this one. So you get them as standard, obviously, in, yeah. in the box. You get an array of colors. Um, you've got the sync module built in. Works in exactly the same fashion as uh, the, the Connect module does. Um, but this is where it starts to get different. You've got uh, 12G in and out, along with HDMI in and out. And of course, you can still do cross-conversion there. You've got USB-C port. That's really for uh, future expansion. Doesn't really do much at the moment. Um, and of course, you've got NDI capabilities coming to this. Um, you know, you look at the price point. It's what it's like thirteen hundred, and you're getting the most powerful recorder from Atomos, along mm. with all of this ca connected capabilities. You know, mm. it's it's a pretty <laughs> attractive uh, offering. So let's break down a little bit more the choosing between because I think that is. That's become the really big confusing issue mm. with the Shoguns is, you know, okay, say I'm sitting at home th thinking I want to buy a Shogun, which one do I now go for? Yeah. Um, is it, so if you take out the live switching and you take out the cloud bits, this one has more recording functionality. Is yes, that right? it's got more processing power. Yeah. Yeah. So it can do the 8K, 30p raw, whereas the other one tops out at 6K. That's right, right. yeah, yeah. So it's the more powerful of the two in terms of connecting. So I guess really, if you don't need that live switching, if yes. you don't need to feed multiple inputs in and cut between them on the fly, or just simply view them as a four up, yep. if you don't want that, then this is the one to go for. Yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I mean, there are some other slight differences where this has just the, the one battery um, battery port. The other one has uh, two. Yes. Yep. So obviously you can't hot swap because you know, there's nothing to hot swap between. And this one won't last as long on batteries because of it. You know, you can't put two batteries in. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, the, there are trade-offs. But mm. yeah, in a nutshell, if you don't want the switching and you don't want a fixed uh, sync genlock port, then, you know, this would be the one that I would suggest that, that people look at just because you, you're kind of reach-proofing yourself a little bit. Yeah, more there. true. You Very know, true. 8K30, obviously not everyone needs that right now, but mm -hmm. camera technology is getting to the point where <laughs> that's... You know, we're not shocked when a camera comes out now and, and it says it's 8K capable. Mm. You look a few years ago, then that would be kind of mind-boggling. <laughs> yep. So, so that, that, they're the two units. And in terms of if you're doing the camera to cloud, in terms of um, how that actually uh, appears to you as a camera operator <coughs> or a shooter, uh, when you're in that camera to cloud mode that you, you trigger from the Atomos cloud portal, uh, as soon as you hit record, in, in the top corner of the screen, you basically get a little indicator Mm -hmm. uh, that tells you how many files uh, are to be uploaded. It creates a queue. Creates like a little buffer. Yeah, so as soon as you stop recording, it, it shoots up, and then you get that indication there on the screen, uh -huh. and a confirmation that it's gone up. So you've got a little bit of reassurance that it's actually doing, doing something. what you want it to do. And you know if it's your internet connection's bad and it's not... Yeah, if it's slow. If it's slowing, slowing the process up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it is, it is a very slick and straightforward workflow, mm. especially if you're brand new to sort of camera to cloud and you've never done that before. Mm. It can seem a little bit daunting, especially before these products came along. There wasn't that many players. No, um, not really. I mean, it was the Teradek Cubes, I think. In fact, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. could do it. Teradek yeah. 655, I think, yeah. with a, yeah. Uh, and obviously, the price point wise, it's very, very different sure. to, to these ones. Yeah. Um, so that, that brings us to, to the Zato, which, like I said before, is completely different, really, to, to these two models. Yes. Um, and like I said before, you kind of imagine this like a Shinobi. You know, it's a five-inch monitor. It's the same panel as what you find in a Ninja. Uh, it's very lightweight um, and a you know, price point that's quite aligned to Shinobi. It's not that yep. much more. Uh, but you have HDMI uh, in and out. Uh, if you're familiar with the Shinobi, you just have a HDMI in, so it's end of the chain. This isn't the case. Um, you have a, two USB-C ports on there. One of them is so that you can attach a Ethernet adapter that comes with it as standard. Mm -hmm. You do also have Wi-Fi 5 built in. I've just not got the antennas there, but they sit on the mm -hmm. top. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, there's no sync because you don't need to use sync with, with this because we're not really it's not really designed for that. It's mm -hmm. really to send out to that final destination. And yeah, the main selling point is that you can live stream with it. So mm -hmm. live streaming using uh, RTMP using Atomos Cloud Studio. 
Uh, you can actually use it as a recorder if you want to. It has an SD slot on the side. Uh, you can record in H.264, all 8-bit 420 currently, but you can choose the bit rate, and it goes all the way up to 80 megabits per second, all intra, so you know, quite a hefty <laughs> H.264 file. Um, but what it does lack is the processing power to do that and also do a separate encode for your live stream. Yep. So you, when you're live streaming with this, your record is fixed to your live streaming bit rate, which is dictated gotcha. by the platform that you're streaming at currently. So that's the main difference. So can this do all the camera and cloud goodies? Currently, no. Right. This is purely for live streaming and recording. So is maybe the best way to think about this almost as a little live stream encoder box, you know, a bit like a, you know, a Blackmagic web presenter or any of those other tiny little um, encoding boxes, which just happens to have a nice screen on it. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's a perfect way of looking at it. You know, if you need to live stream from any HDMI device, whether it be a drone receiver, your mm -hmm. camera output, um, whatever you want to feed into it, I mean, it will only do a 1080, um, but you can, it will downsample for you. Um, then, yeah, you, you can use that to, to instantly go and live stream. And you do have added functionality like um, being able to overlay PNGs. So if you want to put your company logo in the corner or a little live bug in the corner, you can do. It also supports USB video in, so UVC in. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted mm -hmm. to stream from your webcam, for example, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, coming further down the line, you'll be able to do a picture in picture between the HDMI and the USB input. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could you could essentially do a, a two camera stream. They've not promised switching, but a picture in picture is definitely in the works. Uh, and you've also got USB out as well. So you can do UVC out. So, so if you want to convert your standard, you know, cine camera to, to USB, you can still do that with this and use it in. So for people that might not be familiar, that, that UVC out is um, to basically trick your computer into thinking it's a webcam. Yeah, it's, it's just a plug and play, shows up like a webcam. It. And yeah, whatever and you're feeding into this, you'll instantly have access in your conferencing platform or sure. if you want to live stream with it. So, you know, it's, it is a little bit of a Swiss army knife. Mm. I mean, in, term, in terms of the, the UI, it's quite different. Um, it's it's a it's a simplified okay. operating system in comparison to Shinobi. And so this is not a Shinobi with extra features. No, this is it might look a bit like a Shinobi because yep. it's still a five inch monitor. Yeah, um, but it doesn't have all the monitoring tools like waveforms, false color. No. This isn't this isn't really to give you confidence in what you're shooting. This is to give you confidence in live streaming. Yeah, gotcha. Um, the tools that you have on board this are quite basic, like flip, uh, frame guides, uh, and punch and zoom. Yeah. Uh, everything else, like false color, etc., you get on the other devices, are not part of this because this really is to attract any user. You don't have to be a, a content creator or a, vi or a camera person mm -hmm. who um, you know is really familiar with all those tools. You could be someone who just wants to live stream their webcam for whatever reason, you know, or record sure. their webcam. You, and uh, it, even further down the line, what you'll be able to do is uh, play out recorded content from the SD card out via USB. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to play pre-recorded content into your video conferencing platform, you know, suddenly you can do that with something yeah. like this. Yeah, great, great. And, you know, you think of the price point, yeah, I think it's like £390. It's pretty much the same yeah. price as the, the Kinect module. Yeah. Um, and you get all those features. Absolutely. And NDI HX is coming along to this as well. Okay, let's talk about the NDI bit. So, so that is going to get the same NDI functionality as the rest of them. Yeah. So yeah. actually, as a NDI decoder box, once the decoding gets unlocked, that's going to be perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, for the price point, you know, you've instantly got a monitor here that can decode NDI from any of these machines or, mm -hmm. you know, from a bigger solution like vMix or whatever, you know. Sure. So yeah, that's coming. And again, NDI HX capabilities is coming at the end of this year. It is important to stress that that isn't a free upgrade. NDI, yeah. obviously, like, like most products that are NDI capable, there's, it's a, license a, there's a license fee. Uh, and that should be £99 uh, for these devices across the board. So um, before we wrap up, if anyone's got any questions at all or anything that they want to chat about, about cloud-connected workflows, now's the time. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, you know, most people watch this after it's been recorded rather than watching it live. So if you were watching this afterwards, just leave it in the comments. We're going to be actively monitoring the comments and jumping in to create a bit of a discussion would be great. But for those of you watching this live right now, you know, let us know what you think of cloud connected workflows. How would you use it? Why would you not use it? You know, what use cases could you see for it? Um, but that might be quite a nice way just to wrap this up is just chatting about the potential uses for all of this stuff, you yeah. know. Um, 
I mean, what customers do you think? I mean, th- my wedding example. Let's start there, shall we? I think, I think there's a huge potential in that kind of market for camera to cloud, but also the live streaming bit. You know, more and more, and to have a device that can do both yeah. um, in a UI that is as simple and easy to use, because a lot of people in that industry aren't quite as techy as yeah, yeah. some other areas in the industry that might be used to live streaming. Um, lots of them, for example, are photographers who have crossed into video, mm. that kind of in, um, part of the market. Um, having them in a, a device with this UI as simple as Atomos, I think is a really big sell. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, the applications for, for all of these products, are, I think they're quite... They're quite broad. Obviously, mm. we, we kind of focus on camera to cloud, and instantly you're you know you go to traditional cine production. That's where you yes. mo- that's where the mind goes. Yep, that um, creating dailies workflow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but actually, you know, it filters all the way down to as I mentioned before. You know, the the, the owner operator, cell shooter, someone who's <laughs> potentially working in corporates, weddings. Yep. Uh, I did a, a, a stint in corporate production one point in my life, and yep. one of the big uh, things that we did uh, quite regularly was we'd film a corporate event and we'd turn around a, a highlights reel to be played at the end of the event to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. Now, when you were doing that, obviously you were have, then having to constantly go back and log your footage with your editor and that time is wasted where you could be out capturing some of the moments, you know, the uh-huh. big moments that could be happening out there. You know, with this, you could just be constantly sending your, your footage to your editor in the back and it would just speed up that process massively with really not that much investment required mm-hmm. to get that workflow. That's just, that's, just, that's just one element where, you know, I've had personal experience where I think having, having this back then would have, I might still have hair, you know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've lost count of the amount of corporate clients and, and, and wedding clients and all of them that, that ask for the complete rushes at the end. Mm. And it always used to be such a pain because you think, well, I've recorded this in ProRes. You know, how are you even going to watch it back? Yeah. You know, um, for the most part, they're all on, all on very basic Windows computers. You know, yeah. You're not going to watch any of this stuff back. Whereas if you give them a frame I.O. login with um, cloud control, like, well, here you go. Here's access to all of them on a web portal. Yeah, and they can download Done. it all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they can download it all. They can flick through it. They can do whatever they want. Also, if you, if you, if you also have those H.265 proxies on your SSD, so you know, if you wanted to give yeah. it to them there and then, in physical media, if people still like to operate in that way, then sure. you know you can do. So yeah, no, there's definitely value adds there that you can give if if that's your sort of customer who asks for those those types of things. Absolutely, and I think for journalism as well, there's a super clear use case mm. for. I mean, to an extent, lots of the bigger journalist, um, you know, the BBCs and the Skies and all that sort of stuff of the world are, are well established FTP workflows, mm. and that's not going to change. But for the more grassroots kind of people the local tv stations the um social media people that are huge nowadays Mm. um transferring files around super quickly and having a live stream device on top of that um is super useful as well yeah it's yeah it's it's not just it's not just one prong you know that like i said before at the beginning there are five five elements that this whole connected range feeds into um you know you might only need one right now Mm. but as with any tech investment you kind of want to you know throw your net as wide as possible for the future and hopefully you know that's what these products kind of tick the box for and there's going to be so much more to come right i mean how from from chat from your talks with atomos how much of a focus do you think there is on this is this this is their future right Uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, most, if not all, products that come from Atomos going forward will be part of the connected range. Mm, interesting. Especially when you think about the remote monitoring capabilities, mm. uh, you know, being able to push and pull from not just these size monitors, but, you know, 19-inch, 24-inch uh, mm-hmm. monitors, you know, suddenly, wow, what an ecosystem. Yeah. And that's the goal, really. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. A huge amount of sense. Mm. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, not a problem. And yeah, thank you so much for having me. And yeah, you, you guys, your team and the studio set up, you've done a great job. Yeah, honestly, I love the channel. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you all for watching. Obviously, if you want to buy any of this stuff, get in touch with the guys over at ProEV. 
Um, and if you have any questions on any of it, we will be checking the, the comments down below. So um, if you've got any questions yourself for Chris or if it's anything we can help with, just leave them down in the comments. Thank you all for watching. See you soon. Switz's latest RGBW panel innovations, the Van Gogh 70 and Van Gogh 100 LED panels. The Van Gogh series uses exclusive edge-mounted RGBW SMD LEDs, which results in an extremely thin 21mm LED panel that is fanless, making zero noise on set. Thinner, lighter, brighter, and quieter. These are the Van Gogh Ultra Slim RGBW panels by Swit. There's an old saying, many hands make light work. This couldn't be more true than with the latest addition to our range of support accessories, the iFootage Spider Crabs. An ingeniously designed set of support arms which go where you go, consistently and safely supporting your valuable equipment, providing you with the time, space, and freedom to create. Spider crabs provide a reliable, modular system designed to support you, no matter where you find yourself working. This versatile system cleverly combines a variety of practical support options, providing you with even more creative choices and possibilities. Action! Good. I need more passion. Camera up. Turn up the heat and make those embers glow. Beautiful. I feel good. I feel good right now. I'm on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm on fire. It's time to change the way we think about lighting. Introducing the new Anglerfish series from iFootage. Boasting cutting edge color reproduction without sacrificing portability, the Anglerfish series makes cinematic lighting more accessible than ever. The Anglerfish series utilizes a bespoke construction and a new one of a kind LED element to recreate the full spectrum of the sun with unbeaten accuracy. This unique LED element recreates the full daylight spectrum, but without the blue peak that's typically found in even the top studio lighting products. Right now. Not just any bomb. 
Ihan. <laughs>